morning, everybody. Walter the Palmetto Cemetery in here. We're in the truck early today. We're driving, we're heading south. Going to Piedmont. If you have seen my last video on my channel, or if you follow my Instagram page, you have seen the Charles House. Um, now, if you don't know, the Charles House is a home that my ancestors built and lived in, probably dating back to the 1830s or 1840s. The house is known as the John M. Charles House. John M. Charles um, is my great, 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 great grandfather. Can't even count him on one hand. Um, he died in 1848, so I know the house has to predate that year, at least. So, nearly 200 years old, right? At least maybe 180 years old. The house, if you remember, has been sitting on a piece of commercial real estate that's very expensive. Um, sorry, I gotta change lanes. Um, and because of that, I have always known that the clock is ticking on the house. The house is not, not it, it was not in good condition, uh, to say the least. It had been squatted in and abused relentlessly. The squatters had taken all the doors and the fireplace mantles. I'm pretty sure now that they, they use them for firewood, um, which was just sickening to me, but I guess you gotta stay warm. Um, so I, I, the reason I'm going to the Charles house today is two days ago, I get a text from a friend saying that there's equipment in the yard of the house. And that made my stomach drop. Um, fingers crossed, I can't come to the, I can't, I can't go to the house. It's just not, not going to work out on my schedule. Um, the next day I get a text um, saying that only one wall of the house is left. Um, and then yesterday evening, I get a text saying that all of the wood has been hauled off from the house. Um, and there's a pile of bricks left. So the house has been destroyed. I, I knew this time was coming, uh, but I didn't think it was going to come so soon. I wasn't terribly pleased with my video on the Charles house that I did, and that's just because I'm inexperienced. I just started editing stuff. Um, and while watching YouTube videos is one thing, and I've watched many of them in my life, um, making them is, a, is kind of a different story, I think. Making them is a little bit more difficult. But I'm figuring it out. So today, we are driving to the ruins of the Charles house, and hopefully, fingers crossed, the demolition people, if there are any still there, the cleanup crew, whoever's cleaning up the remains of the house will let me take some of the bricks. Um, if anything, I'm helping him because his now he has less to haul off or less to throw in a dumpster. Um, but these bricks are probably, I mean, getting close to 200 years old. They're handmade, um, possibly even made by slaves. Um, in fact, quite likely, likely made by slaves. Um, <coughs> and the Charles house, um, is, is, a, is a truly a tragic um, story. And it's, it's because Greenville County, the southern part, is where it lived, the Charles House. Um, Greenville is growing explosively. Um, we have housing developments and subdivisions, condos, shopping, shopping centers, uh, strip malls, gas stations going up everywhere. Um, and Greenville was, is not the Greenville it was 10 years ago. But in this time of growth, and this even dates back past the previous decade, we have done a really poor job as Greenvillians of saving our history. There, there is an endless list of historically significant buildings and houses and structures of, of all kinds that have been torn down. Um, people here just not recognizing the importance of these sites, and because of it, we're losing all of them. Uh, the, the list of 19th century houses
houses in Greenville County is really short. Whereas we could we could have many more and we could have them preserved and people could live in them or they could be used to educate people about what it was like to live in Greenville 150 or 200 years ago. Uh, but that opportunity is, is being lost and it is pretty much lost now. Um, the Charles House was probably one of the last, um, one of the last homes that we would have had the opportunity maybe to save. I wanted to do something about it, anything about it. I just became acquainted with the house probably six months ago um, and learned that it was in fact my ancestor's home. I'd known about the cemetery that was... Uh, through the woods just a little ways away, probably 50 or 60 yards at most, but I had no idea that there was a house there and, and that my ancestors had lived there um, back in the 19th century. So that the story has, has kind of come to a, a close on the Charles House. Unfortunately, I wanted to go back there and film more and do a better job at documenting the house and uh, maybe take a little bit more time there uh, filming each room and uh, different aspects of the, of the home. But today, unfortunately, uh, that chapter has, has come to a close and the Charles House is no more. I'm pretty heartbroken over it, but also at the same time, you know, I'm a 21 year old guy and, you know, I don't have millions of dollars to persuade people or to buy property. One day I would like to to prevent stuff like this from happening because it, it's very painful, but it is what it is. And what I had to tell myself last night is everything has an expiration date. You and I have an expiration date. The Charles house had an expiration date. The Papa John's I'm driving by has an expiration date. It won't be there forever. We won't be here forever. Planet earth won't be here forever. So, you know, while historic preservation is, is exponentially important, in my opinion, and I would do anything to have saved the house if I had known what to do, um, I just have to realize, you know, even, even houses that are preserved and restored um, and used as historic sites to educate the public about uh, the area or a particular person, even those burn down from electrical fires, you know, so... Everything has an expiration date. It's it's an unfortunate aspect of our existence, but you know it is what it is, and, and I'm okay with that um, in my own way. It's just a shame that the Charles house couldn't be saved. I wanted my children to be able to see it, um, but if they can't see it, then I'll have to bring them or leave them with pieces of it that they can pass down to their children. And hopefully the, uh, some of the bricks I collect today will end up being um, of historic importance here in Greenville. I hope so, at least. Hope other people will see the same thing that I do in them. But anyways, let's get to the cemetery and to the Charles house. Whew. Not looking forward to seeing this house. I have to apologize for the noise from the road. I am right next to a busy road, but it's true. The house is destroyed. It is gone. Wow. Completely destroyed. Reduced to nothing. Wow can kind of see the layout of the house as it was. Just so sad to see it all in ruins and the bricks and piles like this. It's quite sad. But this was the historic Charles house up until yesterday and the day before. But it is now a, a pile of ruin. You can still see the uh, main chimney right here. And this was the back part of the house. I'm guessing the uh, 
crew will be back here not long from now. Wow. All I can really say is wow. <laughs> you can see the cinder block is from the added on parts of the house and then the, the brick is original. But that is the remains of the chimney there. 200 years old almost. I was just here a few weeks ago and it was a standing structure, but now it is, it's gone. This was the back of the house. And this was the little door at the side we used to come in when I would uh, explore. It's hard to even kind of tell now where we used to walk in and out of. Because it's just all nothing. Look at those square nails. In this timber. So sad. Wow, you can really see into the, uh, what was the basement or the cellar, whatever you'd like to call it. I was really curious about going down into it. Now I guess I can see what it looked like. This was the parlor over here, and I believe I'm standing about where the staircase was. Hope I'm not standing in asbestos. <laughs> I don't really care. Oh well. Wow. There it is, it's nothing now. Here's the front porch. You can tell that was added on later, cinder block. But this brick right here is the original foundation of the house. I think that may have been one of the steps right there. It's kind of difficult to tell now. I'm glad I got to see her one last time. One of Greenville's last houses of this age. I guess this is goodbye, really. I wish my children could have seen it, but it will have to live in my memory that I pass on to them what memory I can. Two hundred years almost of history reduced to a pile of inglorious rubble with an excavator parked on top of it. How about that? As well as some brick, I'm going to save this timber. You can tell I think it was scorched at one point, but <clears throat> this piece of wood is almost certainly original to the house. Look at the nails in there. Those are handmade nails. You can see a cut right there some kind of a beam support maybe hard to tell now but let's see if we can find some good brick goes to the police <laughs> glad they're not here for me <laughs> but you can see through there that pile of brick is what's left of the side chimney the house had three fireplaces which was pretty common kind of a main one in the middle of the house and 
one on each side. Wow. Plenty of mortar still on him. Looks like a sand-based mortar which would have been used back in the 19th century when this house was built. A lot of brick to choose from. I'm not really sure what this is, but looks like a bunch of old brick fragments that are cemented or attached to this right here. Looks almost like a piece of terracotta, like old terracotta pipe, but I'm not sure. It's just a kind of a strange anomaly. Here's what's left of the parlor or the sitting room. Some semblance of the floor still left over here. There's a pretty good bit of water in the, what was the cellar or basement. It's probably, maybe it could be a foot deep. I'm not surprised. This is the end. And another great part of Greenville's history is gone. And there's not much left, but it probably won't be the last. It's just hard to believe and it's sad to see. But I'm very glad that I've come here today and been able to collect some remnants of the home to give to my descendants. Hold this square nail out of a board. But it's amazing handling these bricks, knowing that probably the last person to really hold these bricks in their hands were more than likely the slaves that put them where they were for nearly 200 years. And many of those slaves who did that are buried in these woods. There's a slave cemetery out there. I just, I don't know exactly where it is. If you've seen my previous one before last video but I'm gonna grab a few more things get what I can and get out of here because I really don't want to get chased off I'm not sure where the demo guys are but I don't want to wait to find out I just want to be gone when they get here if they're coming today well I ran into this guy and he's currently working on cleaning up the debris. It's uh, gonna be taken to a, a landfill, I believe. He's working on it. Wow, look at that timber. Golly. He just set it to the side. It's interesting.
He said the uh, the chimney is gonna go last today. I would like this day to see it go, but. I don't think I'll be able to stay that long. I have some other things I have to do today, unfortunately. A little bit ago this guy showed up and he's a uh, part of the demo crew <laughs> he's uh, been <laughs> picking up the trash from the house and he's been super kind to let me take home some stuff and even save me a big timber um, and he's gonna take some for himself as well which I, I don't blame him you know I told him how old it all was and he uh, I think he made up his mind to bring some home with him and I certainly don't blame him it's in wonderful condition. He said the only part of the house that was eaten up with termites was the added on part, the new part, probably more like 50, 60, 70 years old, not 200 years old. But he's a super cool guy. He's just doing his job. I can't blame a guy for just doing his job. And the house was condemned by the county and nobody should have been living in it in its condition anyways. I just wish it could have been preserved a little better. Well, I'm leaving the Charles house. Um, unfortunate, pretty sad uh, to see it all in front of me as I'm speaking to you in piles. Um, I left with a lot of these today and even have some timber with square nails in it um, that I've gathered to take home with me. Um, this is the last I'll ever see it. But um, I met an, uh, an amazing man today. Um, his name is Gary. And Gary, believe it or not, grew up in this area back in the 40s. Um, I'm going to go out this other way. And he was able to share some photos with me of this very area where I am right now. And believe it or not, it was a big open field. The pines were this big, just starting to grow up. And in the background behind him and his brother and his sister in about 1945 is the Charles Cemetery. If he hadn't told me it was a cemetery, I probably wouldn't know. Um, just because it's it's quite a distance away in the photograph. Um, but still a great piece of history that I'm extremely grateful to have. Um, but it's just sad, you know, to, to see something that was so historically precious um, reduced to nothing. And that gentleman, Gary, was telling me about, he, he was naming houses that were all up and down the road I'm driving on right now, dating back to the 1830s, 1840s, 1870s. 
that have all been destroyed um, and torn down in the name of progress, in the name of growth. What's the point in growing and becoming something new if you forget what you were or who you were or where you come from? I just think this is a, it's a shame and we don't have very many houses like that left to save in Greenville, if at all. I, I couldn't name another one that's that old, that was as old as the Charles house that's still standing like it was. And the thing that almost pained me the worst is the house was condemned, which is why it was torn down. Nobody had lived there officially for 20 years. Of course, the squatters um, are an exception. It's not like they exactly took care of the place. Um, But the, the thing that really got me was that the timber, the original timber, I'm sitting next to some of it right now and I've got more in the bed, was not termite damaged at all. So the main structure of the original part of the house had survived, essentially. But yeah, I just watched a, an excavator pick it up like it was a toothpick and throw it to a dumpster. Not exactly a victory, but also knew that this was coming eventually. And that likely it wouldn't, there wouldn't be enough time for me to be able to buy the house or buy the property and move the house somewhere else. It just wasn't gonna happen. But I got it, I got to go inside. I got to see it, I got to film it. Um, I got to watch it be torn down, which was saddening but also kind of gives me a sense of closure about it because it would have been much worse to drive by and see it just gone as if it had never been there um, just is how it is now folks but I hope my next video will be a little bit happier um, a little bit more positive maybe we can I can show you how I've been doing in the cemetery I think I've been doing all right it's, it looks dr drastically better than it did back in December. It's April now. We've, I've been working in it as much as I can here and there for four months. It's, it's a 40 minute drive in a direction I rarely travel. And the only time I really travel this far south is to go to the Charles Cemetery or was to go to the Charles House. Um, but I'll be curious to see what ends up happening with the property. They, they had to tear the house down. The county ordered them to do so. I think they been putting it off for a long time. Thank you for watching my video today. I greatly appreciate it. If you liked the video, like it. Uh, if you want to see more of them, subscribe and uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, Palmetto Cemeterian. Uh, it's the same name that I have on YouTube. It's just one word. But uh, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And thank you again for all your support. Um, this has not been the, the easiest journey or the easiest venture, but it is a worthy venture. Cemeteries are it's so important to me, and they're, they're such important parts of our community, whether it's a small family cemetery that's got five graves in it, or a city cemetery with, uh, with several hundred or maybe even thousands. But I'll have more for you soon. I look forward to seeing you all again shortly. Take care. Before I let you go, um, these are some of the bricks, just a few of them that I have from the house. The ones on the left are um, from the chimney fireplace. Um, the one on the top is from the main <coughs> chimney. And then the one on the bottom is from the right hand side. And then these two are much the same. Um, and then these are foundation bricks. Um, as you can see, there's still quite a lot of mortar left on them. Um, and then in the corner, I've got <clears throat> some of the timbers. The left one I did not show y'all. It's got some good square nails in it. The top one, y'all did see the scorched one. And then I have a small section of a large timber right there. But um, before the video ends, here's a quick little compilation of some footage from the Charles house before it was torn down. Thanks again for watching.